Hi, this is Physics Unit 1, May 2014. Let's start. Number 1. A rocket of mass M lifts off with an acceleration A due to the engines providing a thrust T. Which row of the in the table correctly identifies the quantities M, T, and A as a scalar or vector? So basically, our scalar quantity is a quantity which only has magnitude but no direction. For example, time and mass. So time we can say 5 seconds or 10 seconds or 1 minute or 1 day or 2 decades or something like that. So time has a magnitude which is 5, 10. These values are the magnitudes but they do not have any direction. Another example would be the mass kg, 5 kg, 10 kg is also a scalar quantity. A vector quantity is a quantity which has both magnitude and direction. For example, velocity. We can say that uh, an object has a velocity of 5 meter per second due north or 30 degrees due east or something like that. So ve vector quantity is basically a quantity which has both magnitude and direction. So mass. Mass is a scalar quantity since it only has a magnitude and tension. Tension is a type of force and force always has a direction. So it is a vector quantity and acceleration is also a vector quantity since F equals to MA resultant force equals to mass into acceleration. Since mass is a scalar quantity and force is a vector quantity as tension is also a vector quantity, acceleration should also be a vector quantity so that both sides each are vector quantity. So acceleration is also a vector quantity so the only possible answer for number one is C. Number two, the table shows velocity time and acceleration time graphs for an object in motion. So this is the velocity time graph and this is the acceleration time graph. Which row of the table contains a pair of graphs that could be consistent for the motion of the object? So basically this is the velocity time graph so here the velocity is constant right velocity is constantly increasing so acceleration is basically velocity by time so velocity by time velocity by time of this is actually the gradient right so the gradient of these graphs should be this graph right so here the thing is here we have the velocity time graph so the gradient is constant so basically for this graph the gradient of the so this graph for this graph the acceleration would be a constant gradient a constant non-zero gradient like this so a is not the answer b b is the same graph but this is the correct answer since the gradient is constant so b is the answer c c has constant velocity so constant velocity means that the velocity is not changing since acceleration is a change in velocity by time and velocity is not changing this means that there is zero acceleration so the graph would look something like this this graph would just go to point zero so this would be the graph for part c part d part d says the same thing the graph of this so the graph of this would be the acceleration graph of this one would be this one so the only possible answer to this question the question number is two the answer to question number two is B. Number three, four identical steel balls are dropped simultaneously into test tubes. So these are the four test tubes and these steel balls are dropped simultaneously with different motor oils. So they all are liquids but different liquids, different type of liquids and different type of motor oils. The graph shows the position of the balls after a short time. So number three says that which test tube ABCD contains the oil with the lowest viscosity so what is viscosity viscosity is basically the resistance to flow right so a higher viscosity means that there is a higher resistance to flow so the rate of flow would decrease so basically if we draw a graph of viscosity and rate of flow then there would be like this they're inversely proportional when the viscosity increases this means that the resistance to flow increases so since the resistance to flow increase the rate of flow would decrease right the rate of flow would decrease so which test tube abcd contains the oil with the lowest viscosity the lowest viscosity here means that when there is lower viscosity there is a higher rate of flow since there is a higher rate of flow it will flow more so if we drop the balls from this 
this height the ball with the highest lowest viscosity of the oil would travel the most so part b has traveled the most so the answer to this question is b number four test tube d is heated and the ball is dropped into it in the same way so test tube d is now heated right the temperature increases in the test tube d compared with the previous experiment the position of the ball d in test tube d after the same short time is so basically we have another graph which is temperature against viscosity right there is temperature and there is viscosity and we have and we also had viscosity and rate of flow right so temperature is basically inversely proportional to the viscosity and viscosity is inversely proportional to the rate of flow so we can also say that the temperature and the rate of flow they are proportional right as the temperature would increase the rate of flow would increase so temperature when the temperature increases the viscosity decreases and when this viscosity decrease this rate of flow increases so when the rate of flow increase ball would sink lower down right it would sink lower down so when the temperature increases when the temperature increases the viscosity is lower the viscosity is lower when it increases it decreases so the viscosity of the oil is lower so when the viscosity is lower the rate of flow is higher right this viscosity is the resistance to flow so when the rate of flow is higher it would go lower down so it would go lower down so the only option to number four is d number five two springs x and y are stretched by the same force f the spring constant of x is double the spring constant of y so basically if the spring constant of y is k then the spring constant of x is 2k so if the energy if energy stored in y is e energy stored in x is given by so so basically the energy is calculated by the area under the graph of force and extension area under the force and extension graph right basically the formula is half fx and we also know that f equals to kx right we have f equals to kx where f is the resultant force k is the spring constant and x is the extension right so for x if th there is 2x for every constant force f when there is constant k the extension is x right so when the constant k is 2k then extension would be x by 2 since the force has to be constant right in both the situations so basically if there is half fx for i for y it is half fx so for x it would be half into f into x by 2 which is half fx by 2 and since this y for this y for y is equals to half fx equals to e so we can say that we can replace half fx with e and 2 remains so e by 2 so the answer is b the coefficient of restitution of a ball is the ratio of its speed after it bounces to the speed before it bounces right after divided by before the kinetic energy of the ball before it bounces is 3.3 and the kinetic energy after it bounces is 0 0.9 the coefficient of restitution so basically the coefficient the coefficient of restitution is the ratio of speed after the velocity after divided by velocity before right velocity after minus velocity before so basically the kinetic energy before is 3.3 right so basically half mv square of before is 3.3 and the half mv square of after is 0 0.9 so if we make the ratio half mv square before by half mv square after is equals to 3.3 by 0 0.9 we can cut off half and m we have v square v square before by v square after is equals to 3.3 by 0 0.9 right we have 3.3 by 0 0.9 so it says that the ratio after it bounces so after would be would come 
at the top so v square after by v square before is equals to 0 0.9 by 3.3 so the question is in speed not speed squared right so the ratio of velocity after and divided by velocity before is root over 0 0.9 by 3.3 so the only answer that matches with this is option C number 7 an increasing force is applied to a spring and the corresponding extension is measured the spring constant K of the spring is so basically the spring constant if we draw a graph of force and extension we have force and extension del x and we also know that f equals to kx right where f is the force x is the extension and k is the spring constant so we can say that k is equals to f by x what else is f by x f by x is actually the gradient of this graph f by x right so basically if this is the gradient the straight line is basically the gradient of force against extension part c says that it is extension against force this is not correct the correct option would be a force against ext extension since y axis should have the force and x axis should have the extension so c is not correct d is also not correct because area under the graph gives the energy the the force applied per unit length this is correct because the force applied f by x is actually the force applied force applied per unit length but this is not correct because we do not consider the length the initial or original magnitude of length does not matter what matters is the amount of force that we apply that corresponds to one meter extension or one centimeter extension so something like that so it is basically the force the change in force for the change in extension or the change in length not unit length the change in length and the change in length is extension so the correct answer to number seven is a number eight the photograph shows a tennis ball being thrown vertically upwards which row of the table shows the correct direction of the velocity and acceleration of the tennis ball when it is moving upwards so basically the thing is the the ball is moving upwards then it moves down right the girl catches the ball but when it is moving upwards velocity is basically displacement by time right and displacement is basically the shortest distance between two points by time so basically the velocity is upwards right it has a direction so the velocity is upwards but the velocity is decreasing as it is going up why this is because constant force is acting downwards on the ball due to the gravitational pull so the force is downwards right so since f equals to m a and m is constant if the acceleration is negative the force also should be negative so since the force is downwards the acceleration should also be downwards so basically the velocity is upwards when it is moving up and the and the acceleration is always down and when it just goes down like this at that point the velocity is downwards and the acceleration is downwards both of velocity and acceleration would be downward this proves that acceleration would always be downwards and the velocity would depend on the direction which the ball is going so for number eight the correct option is c so number nine tennis ball reaches a maximum height of 2.8 the initial velocity would be given by so basically we have to use the suvat equations here you have you might have learned that in s1 of edexcel mathematics so basically height is 2.8 okay so s is basically the displacement or height so s is the displacement or height u is the initial velocity v is the final velocity a is the acceleration and t is the time so basically the tennis ball is moving up and after a while of 2.8 it reaches its maximum height so basically when it reaches its maximum height v is 0 and acceleration is minus 9.8 and there is an initial velocity that we have to find out so basically the equation involving s u v and a the displacement initial velocity final velocity and acceleration is v square is equals to u square plus 2 a s so basically v is 0 so u square plus 2 into minus 9.81 into 2.8 so basically u square is equals to 2 into 9.81 into 2.8
so u would be root over 2 into 9.81 into 2.8 so basically the value would be c number 10 two forces f1 f1 and f2 on an object are shown in the diagram below if f1 and f2 are drawn to scale the resultant force can be found by measuring the length of the resultant fr which of the following diagrams correctly shows the position of fr so basically f1 is this right f1 is this and f2 is basically this so we can say that let us just move this f1 here and let us just join the head of f f2 with the tail of f1 right so basically this so if we move here we can say that the resultant force is this right the resultant force is in this direction so basically if this in this direction the resultant force from all the options what is the resultant force a is in this direction for b it's in this direction for c it's in this direction and for d it's in this direction so we can clearly see that the f resultant is option d we just need to use the head and tail method and draw a vector triangle to be able to find out the force resultant due to the two forces so the correct uh, only correct answer to number 10 is d so that was the end of the paper if you found the video helpful please a like and let me know if it was helpful any suggestions of any videos in the future this would really boost the youtube algorithm it will just help all of us right so good luck for your exams and take care